Paul came home from the war with a fire in his head and a dishonorable discharge under his belt for an incident involving a shooting. The incident was, of course, mysterious. The nightmares that followed him home were as disturbing as they were persistent. Naturally, and like so many of his ilk, Paul was driven to the bottle to help douse the fireworks between his ears. Unfortunately, it didn't work so well. And before long, he found himself broken, homeless, and without prospects. Fortunately, Paul had a younger sister, Jill, who generously offered up her home and sofa until Paul could get back on his feet and regain some respectability. But her hospitality did not come without its own set of rules and regulations. What did I tell you? I let you stay here, but the one rule is no booze and no guns. I can even deal with girls, except those with booze or guns. I'll take that. As strict as Jill's rules might have seemed, Paul had little choice and fewer options but to abide by the lady of the house no matter how difficult she made it to get by day by day. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna make a new rule, no smoking inside. She comforted him and cared for him. And then she offered even more help. As it turned out, Jill had recently met a doctor. She's not a doctor, she's a therapist. She specializes in addiction and this sort of thing. I thought of you when I met her, so I got her card. I'm making you an appointment. Sometimes the most friendly voices say the hardest things to hear. Hello? Yeah, Cassie Wright, please. Really nice to meet you. I'm Cassie Wright. Uh, just so you know, Reluctantly, Paul sat today. with the very so pregnant therapist about. and spoke about his problems. About you want he told her about his drinking, reasons, the drugs, but he spoke little of his incident your overseas. Your sister, an old tennis teacher, basketball coach, whatever you're comfortable talking about. Well, my first piece of advice would be don't stop drinking. At least not all at once, that would be a mistake. I bet you didn't expect to hear that, huh? You can't just quit cold turkey, as you've discovered, uh, physically, mentally, just because of the void that it leaves. You have to replace it with something. Something has to fill that need and that time. Something less destructive. What about sex? You see, I could prescribe a slew of medications and so forth, but it has been my experience with most people, especially men of your age, that they just need a good lay. How have things been in that regard since you've been back, the lay regard? Satisfied, frustrated? None of the above? Well, 
it has been my experience that a little lay can solve a lot of big problems. Well, for the depression and drinking, I can prescribe naltrexone, but you would have to go to the lab and get blood work done so we could see where your liver stands. Have you ever thought about fetish? I only ask because it seems like you might have. And I do realize that appearances can be deceiving, <laughs> but it's also been my experience that they can't be that deceiving. I know that in the proverbial shed, there are tools that may be sharper than I, but I have been known to have a keen sense on this sort of thing. Of course, maybe you don't know exactly what you need just yet. Maybe you just need an ear and or some medication. But the Denver Fet Life is nothing to turn your nose up at. You know, there are these websites that I've heard of. Fet Den Life is a good one, and Den Fet is another to coordinate meetings and set up gatherings and dates and such. It's not all about sex. I mean, sometimes it's about submission or domination. It, they'll take over a church and turn the basement into rows of cages. No penetration, strictly role playing. And if you don't have toys of your own, you usually can rent them right there. And I know the idea of renting you sex toys may be suspect at best, but I mean, everything can be disinfected, right? As the very pregnant therapist spoke, Toilet play, baby cages, hook suspension, rope bondage. Paul couldn't shake the feeling that he was learning much more about her than she about him. There is something else I've heard about, something very different. I'm going to prescribe you something. This is something I only prescribe to my special cases. And... I think you might just be that special. This is my card. <sighs> On the back, I'm going to write an address and a password. Password? You give the password to the doorman when you get there. This is for tomorrow night. Take it or leave it, but I think you really need to get out and this might just be the thing. Do yourself a favor, show up tomorrow, and let your curiosity get the best of you. After serious consideration of his position, and deliberation of his options, Paul arrived at a conclusion. He decided to fill his prescription.
Gentlemen, hello, welcome. Please, join me in the kitchen area, if you would. I'm Liddell, and it's my pleasure to introduce Mr. Tim. It's his party, and it's our job to facilitate his feelings of enjoyment. He has commissioned us for a very specific brand of good time, and it's up to us to fulfill those expectations. This is Mrs. Tim. She is a willing and able co-conspirator in the job of work to which we have been tasked. Fine? Okay, first of all, condoms will not be encouraged. Fucking A. What is encouraged is that your inevitable ejaculation occur inside Mrs. Tim's person. Where inside Mrs. Tim's person is not so much a concern as that it is inside a person. And if that's not possible, for whatever reason, any exterior orgasm should be achieved, preferably on the exterior of Mrs. Tim. Or, at the very least, stay on the plastic. Stay on the plastic. Position changes only when requested. What? If you want to get blowjob, you must ask Mr. Tim's permission. As per Mr. Tim's wishes, nothing will be left to Mrs. Tim's discretion. So feel free to disregard her requests and ignore her wishes altogether. It's all part of the fun. Throat fuck? Yes, but don't just hop up and straddle her head out of the blue. Either wait until it's requested or give a warning of at least two seconds. Anal is, of course, wonderful. Anal is permitted and encouraged often, but again at the request of Mr. Tim, to whom sequence is of importance. And gentlemen, Please, be gentle. That is, unless otherwise instructed by Mr. Tim or myself. Spitting on Mrs. Tim, biting Mrs. Tim, slapping Mrs. Tim, or otherwise degrading Mrs. Tim is perfectly acceptable. Teeth marks, scratches, bruises are encouraged, but not mandatory. A little blood never hurt anybody but stay on the plastic. As far as any other toys that you may have brought with you, feel free to use them, but be realistic. There's only so much Mrs. Tim can fit inside of her. She's not an acrobat or an astronaut. She's a lady and no weird shit. Okay, you can take her in. One last piece of business, gentlemen, and that's confidentiality, and it's important. These are strict confidentiality contracts. 
These require your name, address, and your signature. When you finish, please be good enough to give your phones to Deshaun, and then we can get started. You'll each be called in one at a time so as to protect personal space and preserve personal dignity. Gregory. First. One at a time. You believe this shit? I'm sick of waiting. I'd rather go jack off. First time? Yeah, I can tell. Must seem weird, right? It's not. Lots of guys pay to watch their wives get gang banged and shit. It's awesome. This one's a little weird though. Black guys? Too many rules and shit, you know, I feel like I'm back in school. A lot of these uh, big shit career women wives, bipolar, you know. That's why they get so much work done. But when they're in that manic state, they're all hypersexual too. And they need like 10 guys at once. Fucking Mexicans and shit. Fucking just love cum. They need deep dish anal like a fish needs water. First, their husbands don't know what the fuck to do. It's fucking awesome. You do this a lot? Yeah. I answer all kinds of ads. Got a big dick like my old man, so you know, I'm in demand. I haven't been out in a while, though. Did a chick with a yeast infection. I'm out cool now. Just took forever. Can I go in before you? No way, bro. Want some ecstasy? Fucking obligatory for a gig like this. Alcoholic? No, I'm a fucking badass. Fucked like six chicks this week. Only had to pay for two. Basically, I'm just trying to party as much as possible. Next one's up. It's me.
dang all right. Call Tyrus. Paul told his sister everything. He spared no detail. Naturally, for a man of Paul's credibility, he was met with skepticism. You're gonna wind up in the VA right next to Dad if you don't pull it together. If it is true, then you need to call the police. Paul did indeed call the police. Someone will follow up with you as soon as possible. Thank you for your assistance in this matter. And the therapist. You've reached the office of Cassie Wright. She's currently in an appointment or unavailable. If this is an emergency, please dial the Rose Medical Center. Both to no avail. Although, to Paul's credit, the officer said it was the best call they had received in many weeks. The body of an as yet unidentified female and those of two unidentified males were discovered in the early hours of this morning on the east bank of the Platte River just outside of downtown Denver. 
Early forensic evidence indicates that the two males were engaged in a sexual assault before the young woman gravely turned the tape of one of her attackers and attempted to fight back. Just listen. I think I figured it out. Paul explained his new and exciting theories for Jill. He broke down the chain of events as he saw them from back to front. What else do you remember? What apartment was it? 12 something. No, wait. I remember the number 1216. What else? I remember knives and tools in the sink. I mean, for all I know, we were the third round that night. And the woman was drugged from the start. With what, I don't know. Probably something that can't be traced, but... I did the job on her. So... This all means that... Just listen. So it's a rich, older husband and an attractive, much younger wife. She's cheating on him. Getting somewhere else which she can't get from him. Only he's sick of it. But knocking her off isn't good enough for this guy. He's humiliated and he's not pleased about it. Nothing will be left to Mrs. Tim's discretion. So feel free to disregard her requests and ignore her wishes altogether. It's all part of the fun. And he wants to see her fucked by strange men. Anal is, of course, wonderful. Anal is permitted and encouraged often. And then he wants to see the men who fucked her killed unpleasantly. Before he offs her. Why? Because he's pissed. Because it's his thing. Or he's pissed and that's his thing. It doesn't matter. But Mr. Tim is just a money guy. He doesn't coordinate this kind of thing. So he hires these folks to put it all together for him. God knows how, but money has a way of finding a pocket no matter what it has to do to get there. They wanted as much physical evidence as possible. First of all, Condoms will not be encouraged. Why? Teeth marks, scratches, bruises are encouraged, but not mandatory. So they could just dump the bodies in the river and be done with it. The killers and the killed, an open and shut case neatly wrapped. This doesn't make any sense. I'm supposed to be dead in the river too. And I was sent there by the doctor with the address and the password. I mean, for all I know, she was just plucking the ideal losers for the task. People no one would care about. People with a history of... So now you're saying the doctor was in on it too? What? You knew the doctor. You made the appointment, and you sent me to her. Hello? Cassie Wright, please. Wait, wait, wait. You're losing it. You're cracking up again.
Check out the rest of the place. Okay. Okay. God, I hate white people. You ready to change? I'll get it. Okay.
should be at home in bed, my wife watching TV. Instead, here I am dealing with this. I mean, sometimes I just get so frustrated, you know? Uh huh. I know I shouldn't let things get to me. I know that. And I'm working on it. But it ain't easy. It's just trying to pursue your goals in the world of life. The memory of man runneth not to the contrary. Okay? All right. One, two, three. Look, you still twitching around. Okay. Jillian, how are you? So, did they let me out of the VA? Close enough. Yeah, well, sort of. They came there, and they told me about, you know. Would have rather heard it from you, but... So I decided to... You shouldn't call him or anything. 
I'll walk straight back in there as soon as this mission is finished. You look different. Sound different, too. Used to be a talker like your mother. You got anything to drink around here? Vietnam wasn't my war, it was my paradise. Where else was I gonna go? For an FNG it was a nightmare, but for a mud roller like me, more home than home ever was, that's for damn sure. Next thing I know, I'm back stateside. With a dishonorable and empty pockets and a permanent bed at the VA. Jill told her father everything that Paul had told her. That doesn't make a lick of damn sense to me. Sure, there were criminal enterprises, she explained, that promised much easier and more lucrative returns. But this group of miscreants were not so much devoted to the profits as they were to the process. They enjoyed their work. Just tell me where. And so they devised a plan. Jill would confront the therapist at her office. Her father would pay a visit to the scene of the crime. All right, let's go. You need Paul's things? No. Brought my own gear. Yes? Yes? 
Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh... Yes? Can I help you? Come in. I'm not selling anything or anything. I was just uh, looking for somebody that I thought might have lived here. Me? Oh, not you. You live here. Yeah, sorry. Uh, no, uh, my daughter, she uh, said that... You're uh, looking for your daughter? No, not my daughter. Uh, someone that she said... Uh, I'm sorry. I don't understand. I'm looking for Cassie Wright. She's a doctor who specializes in addiction therapy. Well, you're half right and half wrong. I am Cassie Wright, and I do specialize in addiction therapy, but I'm not a doctor. I'm an APRN CNS. You're Cassie Wright. Then who is the woman who was using this office? Well, no one else uses this office. This is my office. Then who is the woman who I met, who saw my brother here last week? Oh, I see. Obviously, we have a misunderstanding. You see, I was in Chicago for the last two months, and I haven't been taking any new patients. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to tell you. Like I said, I haven't been taking any new patients, but I can see, in your case, it might be necessary to make an exception. I'm awful sorry about this, ma'am. I, I guess we must have got our wires crossed or something. Oh. Okay. I'm in the wrong place or something, Probably. maybe. Uh, you, you don't mind, though, if I just ask you? Uh, I'm sorry, it's just that I came a long ways and everything. Uh, I don't know how well you know your neighbors. Mm. I, I don't mean to bother you. I feel real bad about taking up your time and, and, you, and your condition and whatnot. Uh, but uh, you, you don't by any chance know a Mr. Rondo, do you? If not, it's okay, I'll just go, but... Uh, no, I, you know, why don't you just come in for a minute and you figure it out? Oh, no, 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 I've taken up enough of your time already. No, 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 come on in. Just a minute. Well, uh, uh, maybe just for a minute, then. Yeah. Come on. That's all it's gonna take. Now, you'll have to forgive me. I was just on the verge of falling asleep. Oh, I'm awful sorry about that. Oh, no, 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 it's fine. I'm always on the verge of, you know, you just have to bear with me. I'm sorry to bother you like this. How well do you know the other folks who live on this floor? Well, uh, we've been here a few months, but we're planning on moving soon, you know, to a place with more space for family. Hey! What the uh, fuck? Don't break a fucking hip, honey. You son of a bitch! You old fuck. Communist! Oh. Get your hand off me! That's my husband! Not a communist. Damn it, you motherfucker! Get your hand off me!
honey, be a doll and take the batteries out of the smoke detectors and open all the windows. Rondo. Okay. Won't you come in? Excuse me. Hmm. 
See? Never know, do you? That was my thought. The memory of man runneth not to the contrary. We talk business now. Of course. There's nothing I would like more in the world than to talk to you about business. After you, Miss... Jill. After you, Miss Jill. So, how'd you come upon our little shop? The therapist. Mm-hmm. I see. She gave me the address and the password. Mm-hmm. So, what can I do for you? <laughs> Miss Jill, I'm afraid I can't help unless I know. I understand that you provide special services. Services of a unique kind. It's also my understanding that these services come at a premium. But a premium is what I'm willing to pay for these services. These services being what they are. Unique. And what services can we provide? Are you looking for the basic package? Or did you have something more custom tailored in mind? We try to accommodate all needs and all manner of fulfillment. What's thought by some to be strange or out of the ordinary makes no difference to us. Good. That's what I've been told. Ordinary is not the thing that I want. I want the other thing. Have you been checking up on me? Let's go inside. Now is the question of the subject. You have to tell me who will be the feature star of this production. Is it your boyfriend? Girlfriend? Is this for a birthday party? An anniversary? So, who will it be? Me. Okay. Why don't you tell me exactly what you require of us, if you don't mind? Yes, I understand you prefer a detailed breakdown. Please, don't be shy. Anal would have to come first, like a good icebreaker, followed by being spanked, slapped, hit, and hair pulled. These can't happen before, because what would I have done to deserve them? At some point, I'll need to be tied up. Can't tell you the exact moment, except to say it's when I get excited about using my hands. At that turning point, I should not be allowed to do so, and should be put in my place accordingly with not leather or silk, but twine rope. Something that burns with my every move and reminds me just how badly I've crossed the line. In regards to the performers that you commission, size is of some importance. That size being large, None of this is going to mean a thing to me unless I feel I'm being used by big dicks. Of course. At least five. Preferably more. The thing I have a real problem with are dead spots. Those moments of awkward, fumbling confusion as we move from one tentpole event to the next. I implore you to make organization priority number one. Because all it takes is one of these 30-second lapses to destroy my concentration, my whole experience, and make me less inclined to pay out on the back end. No. 
I'll most likely bring my own materials and equipment, which I expect to be used on me in the prearranged order and fashion that I instruct, but also to be returned to me without being cleaned, washed, wiped, or anything else that could prevent me from reliving the experience again and again and again. I like to get my money's worth. Now, the tricky part is that I don't want any of them to come. And I don't mean I don't want them to come in me or on me. I don't want them to come, period. Part of my satisfaction involves the knowledge that I was never able to bring any of my lovers to orgasm or give them any pleasure, really, at all. Now, I'm well aware that this makes it a tough sell for your employees, which is another reason I'm willing to pay what I'm willing to pay. And for what I'm willing to pay, they can go home and jerk off, counting their money the whole way for all I care. Fine? On the flip side, if I don't come, all bets are off. This has happened in the past where my semi-professional suitors have simply given up. For this, you'll keep your half up front, but get nothing on the backside. That's if the details of my routine are not followed to a T. All of what you're saying sounds perfectly doable. That's the sister. Oh, I know. We were just having a little talk about what we're going to be doing this evening. Natty, call up our peoples. Tell them we're having a special little party tonight. Then lay down the plastic. This is for you. Get up. Come on. still doing dress? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I get mad at someone for not doing something. Then I remember, I didn't tell them to do it. <laughs> My fault. Now get up and strip. Hmm. That's right. All the way down to your undies. But you can leave those on. We have a guest or two that likes a little undies. <laughs> JR, I hope you're paying attention. It's not too soon to take over the family business. Don't spoil him now. Keep stripping. It'll take some time to work your way up. Don't just assume that you can take our spots that easily, little boy. <laughs> First, an employee. Then a client. Then a performer. And eventually a CEO. <laughs> but that won't be for a long time now, right? We don't want to put any more pressure no, on him. No, 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 no. We don't want to put any more no. pressure on him. And he has to live up to the standards that his daddy sets. To live up to the standards that his mommy sets. <laughs> What's going on? Something that could use a little music. Okay. 
Suit yourself. Yo, sweet cakes, I got sweet cakes. Fresh off the sweet cakes trip. Oh yeah, sweet cakes trip. some music that it's old folks can dance to? Sure, boss. All right. Hey, I'd like to take this special time to propose a toast, if I may. To friends, to family, to business, and to having a Good time with all three. Cheers. Enjoy yourselves, everyone. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that sounds more like it. For sure. Please, do me a favor. And take over for me while I romance my lady. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do, do, ba, ba. Picture. Did you get it? It's that bottom left. time may be to prepare our guests for the rest of the program. Yeah, okay. Come on, let's go.
the hell is Shut the fuck up, Wilson! Everybody downstairs. Now. Look, Miss Jill, let's just talk. Your type wants no part of this business historically. If you're gonna live in the swamp, you better make friends with the gators. The memory of man runneth no... <laughs> I know you mad, but you're just white mad. You're all confused. You just want to be a normal girl. Oh, oh my God. He was correct. Just not today. <laughs>